Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? All right. Who am I talking to? I'm Tiffany Dufoe, and this is Terry Tiffany? Dufoe. Yes. Hi, hi, David. Hi. Hi. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and get ready here. We'll do our official introduction. Uh, uh -oh. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited and honored to welcome our featured guest for this evening. He is an actor of stage and screen, as well as an author, having done many novels and poetry books. And of course, baby boomers everywhere remember him as the one and only Quentin Collins. We're very excited to welcome Mr. David Selby to the show. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, Tony. Hello, everybody. God bless. You know, I don't think we've ever had such excitement of any guests we've ever had on the show like we've had with you. You've got such a loyal fan base. How do you feel uh, about all the fans and all the love they've had for you over the years? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, what can I say? I, first of all, I like your T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> I really do. But, I'm, you know, uh, I'm truly blessed. Yeah. I am truly blessed, and I am ever thankful and you want to know something let me say this about this actor and this great gentleman he was one of a few actors from dark shadows that broke out into mainstream did big movies big tv shows we're talking about a-list stuff and yet with doing things like falcon crest and things that you did which were top 10 shows that, that received the recognition it did Knowing how a lot of people look down on uh, shows like Dark Shadows, which they should not have because it was a great classic show, you still have kept that pride and have raised and, and hung up the Dark Shadows flag. Why is that that you've respected the fact that you were in Dark Shadows as much as you have big shows like Falcon Crest? Well, you know, it, it's just that I was treated so well, and uh, I had such great people around me. Yeah. You think of the people that, that, that uh, one, that were behind the show. I'm talking about the writers and the directors and, uh, and lo and behold, my dear friend Dan Curtis. <laughs> um, but there were so many. I'm talking camera crew, uh, designer, lighting people, but the, and, and the actors. And the actors were all out of, basically out of the New York theater mm -hmm. uh, scene. They had all done plays in, in New York and... Uh, and we just all, I don't know, we, we, we got along. To this day, I, 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 to this day, we get along. I mean, and we still stay in touch yeah. with each other. And I um, only had, I don't know, just admiration. And the first time I went in there, <clears throat> I guess, you know, I, after I had met Dan and and he took me over to the studio and looked at me on camera and then they called me the next day and said hey uh, we want you to join us and I didn't even know what that meant <laughs> join you what am I doing yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden somebody said well you're gonna join us but you're really not gonna speak for a couple of weeks or a few weeks or a few days and I said to myself oh no <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they hear me that'll be it you know whatever but the actors, Grayson Hall, dear Grayson, Grayson Hall took me under her wing, and she said she was my, in a way, my mentor, along mm -hmm. with Joan, dear Joan Bennett, that I followed all the way, and I don't know, became, there was a, another actress, Jane Greer, yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard, but Jane Greer was a wonderful, and she was a dear friend of Jones when they were in Hollywood together right. mm -hmm. and Joan had gone through some you know a couple of tough times but I, I don't know they were just all terrific uh, and all the way from Jonathan to Louis just all the straight all the way down and whatever they were all terrific and we uh, sincerely Basically, I think I can say, well, we had a good time. Right. But we worked well together. Yeah. We worked well together. You know, it's, it's interesting, David, uh, to, and maybe you can tell our listeners a little bit more about your relationship with Joan Bennett, because it's interesting to hear that you had such a close and personal relationship with her, because we have talked to a lot of other actors, uh, maybe some of them, uh, you know, 
some of them were kids younger when they were on Dark Shadows, but a lot of them said that they felt that while Joan was very nice, that she was kind of removed from them. She wasn't real personal with them. She would do do her role, do her job, and then she she would be you know kind of removed from the rest of the cast. Did you feel that way? All right, Judy. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think I really can't say I ever did. Now, obviously, at the beginning, I was. You know, I was shy myself, and uh, I, I did my job and, and I prayed that everyone would be all right with it. But and it, after a bit of time on the show, Joan and I, we we became, you know, we could talk to each other. Right. And it was only uh, as the as the what as the months went by and then a year went by and whatever. But Joan, we would talk. And you know, Joan Bennett had a sister who was also an actress. And their father, correct me, I believe his name was Richard. Yes. And uh, Constance Bennett, Joan Bennett. And Joan told me, you know, I didn't even really want to be an actor. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. And all of that. But if it hadn't have been... And then later on, God, uh, we were privileged and lucky and fortunate and good friends enough to go to her house for dinner one night. Just trade wonderful stories. Uh, But Joan, you know, she came back there. She had been in uh, a difficult situation in Hollywood. And she decided to move back to New York. And if it hadn't been for her agreeing to do the show for Dan Curtis, Mm -hmm. Dark Shadows, and she didn't know anything about it, we might not have ever seen the light of day. Right. Well, you know, I wonder. They, they, you know, they bought her. She had a big enough. I mean, you think about Joan Bennett. Go back and look at some of her. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the she thing I wanted to find star. out about is, is Jonathan Frid. It was very surprising to me, uh, even though you all were friends and all love each other, that you had revealed that uh, towards the end, when you were uh, on location for the Johnny Depp film, that Jonathan Frid had revealed to you that he kind of at first objected to you being brought in as kind of like the big star next to him, <laughs> and in a way a replacement for him when he went on vacation, which I'm sure he appreciated. But he said that that he rejected the fact that you were possibly going to get all the attention. And and when you told fans about this, you were so nice about (laughs) it. And and so, in in reverence to Jonathan Fred, said so many nice things. Can you talk about that for a minute? Uh, Well, Jonathan and I, we got along, you know. uh, I can... (laughs) I used to go in. You know, we'd pass each other's... I'd pass his dressing room sometime and... He'd be in there studying his lines, and and he was amazed. He said, I would learn my lines the night before. You know, I'd take my script home, learn my lines at home, and I never liked to use the teleprompter. Right. And uh, Jonathan, to a certain extent, would live by the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> with the teleprompter. And if the teleprompter stopped, gradually Jonathan would come to a uh, stop. <laughs> but... Um, he, you know, he was just, and he, he was an actor. Yeah. He was a stage actor. Uh, he had done all of these plays, you know, and so I, uh, I looked up to that and admired him. And and you look at his character, Barnabas. Yeah. Uh, he created quite a character, and uh, one that people loved. But he did say that he was a little worried about you getting all the attention at first, right? Oh, and maybe at first, maybe at first. But then, you know, he was thankful. Yeah. He said, <laughs> he, would, he would go off and he wanted to go do something or whatever. And he was having to do all of these, uh, oh, God, I don't know, cross-country trips right. or, you know, doing these things. And, and I, I could go on and sort of, spell him for a while and right. he could 
you know, he actually got some rest, where I think in the end he appreciated it. <laughs> well, you said so many nice things about Jonathan. I wanted to thank you about the nice things you said about somebody else. There's somebody up in heaven right now that's looking at you and thinking, wow, I'm always going to be with David because he was my soulmate, and that's the dear Denise Nickerson. Uh, I get that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. It's I, all right, David. I, I, this it was probably, I, I, I didn't, Denise was very obviously dear to me. Yeah, and just uh, so as was as was David yeah. Hennessy. Yeah. Denise, I don't know. One day I'm in LA. This is years later. Mm -hmm. I'm walking down by Universal Studios. Just walking on the street there, probably going to my car. I got lucky and found the parking place or <laughs> I didn't have a drive off fast to the studio or whatever. And who do I run into is Denise. Yeah. We hadn't seen each other in so long. Uh, we gave each other a big hug. I mean, I loved her. I, I got to do the scenes with those, with Denise and David. And I loved that. And uh, I, I don't know, I always did. So, yes, Denise was a, a dear person. I mean, I mean, you can tell if you watch her acting, of course, as a great actor, you never broke character. But when you talk to her, you could kind of see David inside, David yourself inside of, of Quentin in the fact that you could tell that you had such a great love and respect for her. You always talked to her with a different tone of voice. And it wasn't just acting. It was really you. It was David Selby talking. Yeah. That's, uh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you for mentioning that. But, uh, yes, I, I, I loved her. Yeah. Sweet, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Now, I, I wanted to ask, and as we go through this, David, I'm, I'm monitoring uh, questions that are coming in from the listeners, so I'll be kind of fielding, yeah. fielding those in as well. Um, but one question that got brought up was knowing especially that you had just said to us that when you started out with Dark Shadows that you were kind of shy, you were the new kid, um, <laughs> but how did you feel and how did you take to the fallout of Quentin Collins. All of a sudden, you were a heartthrob. You were on all the teen magazines. Women were waiting and, and swooning. I mean, what was that like as kind of a, a new TV actor? <laughs> well, I was certainly new to television. I, I think I had done one uh, one television thing for, eight, actually, ironically, for ABC. It was an afternoon show. Uh, it was a music about Abraham Lincoln, and uh, we shot it not too far from where I lived up in the up in the '60s uh, off Columbus Avenue on the West Side. But going back to your uh, question, how you know when when Quentin began to be received, and it goes back. There was a lady. I don't know whether. Do you know who Gloria Stavers? I think that's uh, mm, no, she not really. Was the editor. I don't think she was the owner, but she certainly ran a thing called Sixteen Magazine. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes, yes. yes. And uh, Gloria actually, she came to my apartment on 74th Street, New York City. I would walk to work every day down Columbus Avenue. And then when I got to 53rd Street, I just took a right, went on down to the studio. But Gloria, she came brought me an outfit it looked like uh, it looked like something Earl Flynn would have worn in the old pirate movies it had big pillowy sleeves and a swashbuckling sleeve and, and she took my picture and with that and she says I want you to wear this and, here I'm, and then she would put these in her magazine and she was I, she was a huge supporter. I mean, a huge supporter. Right. She just, you know, and pushed uh, this character. And so I was very thankful for that. And I was also <laughs> extremely, every, all the actors, Laura, Catherine, you know, uh, they all, we all got along. Uh, but, the 
when I would walk outside, and I didn't, I was not used to this. I didn't know anything about it. But they'd have the fans come to the studio. And it was actually, I never minded it at all. And Bob, he was our patrol guy, sat down at his desk in the in the lobby down there, <laughs> and, and and then the guy in the parking lot. There was a parking lot right next to the studio, mm-hmm. and when it got a, a couple of times, it got overwhelming, and I didn't know what to do, and I was trying. He would put me in his little booth. <laughs> 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 the fans I I can't tell you they were all terrific Joanne and you know I still have their faces wow. and some of their names in my head and if it Joanne wasn't enough Brooklyn, they went on they right. were from Long Island this I go ahead I'm just I don't mean to ramble that's all right <laughs> if, if it wasn't enough that you were this teen heartthrob on every teenager's wall and every housewives wall and everybody else all of a sudden you're a recording star because <laughs> you you did a you did a, a recitation of shadows of the night because we all yes. anytime in fact i'm surprised you don't have a gramophone playing behind you <laughs> because you gotta have a gramophone play the song and then you come on but all of a sudden you did lyrics to this on this great dark shadows album that i bought and still have when i was a kid okay uh, uh, in fact i've got a david selby museum i've actually got the quentin painting i've got one of, of Quentin, Quentin and one of the werewolf. One of the yeah. werewolf, uh, to where it was even signed Tate, you know, as the Charles artist. Charles Delaware Tate, yeah. But uh, all of a sudden, there's this Dark Shadows album, and uh, it was Jonathan and then yourself, and there was this pull-out, pin-up yes. photo of yourself. And all of a sudden, you're a big star, and you're doing Shadows of the Night, and then you actually did this other places in person dressed as Quentin, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was because... Uh, of a man who became my dear friend mm-hmm. from the very beginning. And we can never underestimate the importance of the music in Dark Shadows. That's right. Yes, absolutely. I Bob mean, Colbert you're talking about, right? Bob Colbert. Yeah, the greatest composer ever. And Bob Colbert, you know, he came to me and said, Come on, David, I want to record you doing some things. And... The crazy thing of it is, I could have done more. I mean, I just, you know, I, I wanted to. <laughs> and he said, but, and even he, he, he said, come on, let's do a song. You and Nancy Barrett, you can sing a song together. <laughs> and so we did that, but it was the dark shadows, yeah. shadows of the night, you know. And yes, I recorded it. I loved it. Personally, I still have the album. I have it framed up on my wall because it meant so much to me. And I can't. Bob Cobert. Bob Cobert's importance to Dark Shadows. Do you by chance, and if you don't, it's fine, do you remember any of the words to Shadows of the Night? You can give us a few lines or do you not Oh, know? if I were in front of me, I should have. Uh, I didn't even. I didn't warn Shadows you. I should have warned night. you. What is it? Calling me to you. Haunting yeah. memory. Good. That's good enough. That's good. Just the voice is magic. And that's all that matters. <laughs> and then you did I Want to Dance with You. You mentioned that with, with Nancy Verity. That had to be great fun recording with her. And rather oh. than reciting the lines, you were singing. Yeah, we were singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great fun. I want to dance with you. Uh, another I dance the whole night through. <laughs> and that proves it was him on the record. There that's you go. Right. The voice is go. the same. Uh, another question, David, from our listening audience. Uh, they want to know if you know if there will be any more Big Finish Dark Shadows audio coming out. Oh, you know, I don't know. I'm sorry, Tiffany. I really don't know. But uh, I was going to say, <laughs> I'll find out for you. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Well, here's a great uh, segue, but, uh, David. Here's a great segue. Uh, that's audio, and it's done in a way to where it's like old-time radio. Now, old-time radio is a thing that we love. We play a lot of that here on the station. You do that with the big finish thing. It's almost the same thing. But now you're taking it to a next level Mm -hmm. because you're giving a Christmas present to the Dark Shadows community in the fact that a lot of you are getting together to do Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol on Zoom. Is that right? Uh, As far as I know. (laughs) 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 Yeah. 
That's right. And I tell you what, you know, there are some old... This is my decaf coffee, by okay. the way, if you see me pulling this up. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, we are going to do a Zoom show of a Christmas carol. And think, how, what a wonderful thing. I'm going to play Ebenezer's group. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yes, that's my choice. Absolutely. Oh, God, you got the good role. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but a lot of... Uh, Fun actors, good actors, great actors have, have played in A Christmas Carol. Can so. you, can you, by chance, let us know? Now, you told us you're playing Ebenezer Scrooge. Now, if I go through the cast, do you know what everybody plays, or, or do you know uh, it yet? You know, they sent me a list, but I don't have it. I, and, I, and I'm sorry, but I don't know. Well, of course, everybody. You know this, David, because everybody, perpetually, when you're in something that's popular, no matter how old you get, they always see you in their mind's eye the way you were when you were on that popular program. So yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. always jumping. For David Hennessy, they're like, oh, I know he's going to play Tiny Tim because he's a kid. He's like 60. <laughs> Do you by chance right. know what David right. Hennessy's going to play? Is David Hennessy going to be Tiny, Tiny Tim, or is that just me? Hoping? I, I don't know who he's going to be. I, I but you know what's wonderful? Is that so many of the actors, <coughs> as I understand it, have a, agreed to come on and, and do it. I mean, uh, you know, so maybe the first time since so many of the original uh, performers on, on, on Dark Shadows DS are getting together. I, right. I, I, don't, I don't know. Are you but, doing this cold that night, or have you guys gotten together in a private Zoom and rehearsed? Have you done it? Oh, uh, we're going to get... We haven't yet. Yeah. <laughs> but... I trust we're going to get together. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be kind of a, a first time meeting for you to uh, meet uh, Alexandria Moki, who played Victoria oh, yes. Winters, because she was long gone before you came on the show. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah will, yeah. will this be the first time you've ever talked to her? Um, I don't know. It's the first time, but one of the few times I can say that for sure. Yeah. Well, just to reiterate it for our listeners, I know we had mentioned this before David came on, but I wanted to give the information again really quick. Uh, the Dark Shadows of Christmas Carol is going to be on Sunday, December 19th at 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 7 o'clock on the East Coast. Um, it's going to be broadcast through the YouTube page for the Quarantine Theater Company. Uh, and if you don't already follow them, you can just head over to YouTube and look up the Quarantine Theater Company or... You can go over to David's website over at davidselby.com, and there's a link over there uh, to the Quarantine Theater Company YouTube page as well. So, yeah. I wanted to find out because at the time of the Johnny Depp movie, uh, there was rumors that Night of Dark Shadows, your great film that you was in for Dan Curtis, uh, was going to be restored because supposedly the rumor goes is there was like 45 minutes of footage that MGM cut out that is missing. They tried to yeah. put it back together, but they only had the, the video. They didn't have an audio track for Grayson Hall. So they had to find somebody to do Grayson's voice, and it never happened because when they released the DVD, it was the cut we've all seen, and the restored footage was never brought out and put back into the film. Do you know if anything's ever occurred with that? Is, is there still hope that we could see the full I think there. I think there are a couple of people still trying to do that. Yeah. And that they, if they could restore Dan's original cut. Yeah. I think that would be I would love to see that. Is there any insight that you can give as to what was cut out that we didn't see or do you remember? You know, I no. I wish <laughs> I wish I could. But I, I it's not that I couldn't tell you. I just you know, having seen it, and I just know that there were uh, certain things that weren't there and it just um, anyway, yeah. Were you really disappointed when they brought out that cut? I know Dan was. Uh, yeah, well, everyone uh, was sort of disappointed. Now, are you talking about when they brought out what? The Johnny Depp film? Or at the, the original? Well, at the, at the time the Johnny Depp film was coming out, they were supposed to bring out a restored version of Night of Dark Shadows, and, and they right, never they did. did. And I was wondering if you were disappointed uh, when Night of Dark Shadows was released back in the 70s that it wasn't the full version Dan Curtis intended it to be. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't the only one. I mean, I was just, you know, certainly Dan was not pleased. 
and uh, be that as it may, that's what happened. I got the greatest comment from Laura Parker because I told her that the way she looked in that negligee and that nightgown, she was the sexiest vision <laughs> I ever saw, and, and she she looked at me and said, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what that means. but. Uh. Uh, another couple of questions that came in from uh, listeners, uh, one of them yeah. is wanting to know, they said that they were under the understanding or belief that when you guys did Dark Shadows, you did it live to tape, that it was pretty much live all the time. So their question is, once you guys got into parallel time, where Quentin was the master of Collinwood, was that done the same way? Because there was a lot of times where it appears like it would have been too much of a quick change to have it actually be done live? Well, all I can say about all of that is, in my, in my memory going back, is that we never had time, we didn't really have time to stop and do it again. In those days, and now this goes back to what, this, the late 60s, right. okay, or the mid to late 60s, late, is that as I recall, the, uh, the network needed uh, a certain amount of time for the West Coast feed, for the news. And so we had to finish at a certain time. I don't remember, as, a, as an actor, ever stopping and saying, all right, we're going to... We're going to shoot the show again. That never, ever happened, yeah. right. to my knowledge, not to, not to my character. Uh, we may have stopped. <coughs> Excuse me. Something Sorry. may have fallen. Mm -hmm. uh, the prompter may have, the teleprompter may have come to a halt <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but we, uh, we had to continue. Right. We I think had to continue. To I think I think you I think you probably made less mistakes than anybody. Right. I was saying I think you probably yeah. made less yeah. mistakes than anybody. I didn't see you make a whole lot of mistakes. Well, I you know what we did. I <laughs> my script home at night. Yeah. We would do, you know after we rehearsed, after we finished the day's tape, which was usually by four o'clock. Yeah. In time. We go up in a little room, and if we could, if there was a little bit of the day show on, we would go in and sneak a peek at what we had already done that you know a long time ago, and it was now on. Uh, not that a long time ago, but and then we'd go into the rehearsal room, and we'd sit around a table, and you all probably know this, and we'd read the next day's script. Right. Well, <clears throat> then I would take that script, and I would go home, and I would memorize. I, you know, right. But most people did. You know, they were from the theater, so they did that. Yeah. Well, you know, another great performance you did, and I guess you actually received a, a Razzie Award, which I don't know is a, if a, if it's a compliment <laughs> or not. But but one of my favorite movies is Raise the Titanic. Raise the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about uh, science fiction, boy. That was really science fiction. Yeah. Uh, here's the Raise the Titanic. I can own it. Uh, my dear friend, Jason Robarts. Yes. Jason was a lovely, uh, an incredible actor, wonderful actor. And we had done a, uh, we had done a, uh, a film together before called Washington Behind Closed Doors. And this was Raise the Titanic, and I, <clears throat> I was in this man's office. I just happened to be in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and I was in this producer's office who wanted to talk to me about a project. And he says, all of a sudden, he says, here, the phone's for you. It's a phone call for you. I get on, and, and, and Jason says, David, it's Jason. <laughs> David, <laughs> David, we got to do this film. They're going to take us all over the world, David. We can take our families and everything. Oh. Oh. That was Raise the Titanic. And sure enough, we did. And my great, great fondness, and I was a great privilege to be in that, to tell you the truth, with dear Jason. And, 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 and also, uh, huh? And Alec Guinness. Yeah. Alec yeah. Guinness, can yeah. you believe it? And Alec later, I'm back in L.A. This is oh, a year, year and a half later. 
and whatever. And I, I get a call one day, and they, that guy said, "Listen, uh, David, Alec Guinness has recommended you for this. Would you come down and talk to you?" <laughs> I thought, "Oh my God, uh. Alec Guinness!" <clears throat> and I had my son with me. He was very young. And what? What famous role did Alec Guinness in? Uh, Star Wars. Yeah. Obi Wan Obi-Wan. Kenobi. Obi Obi Kenobi. Yes. Yes. And he was so nice. Yeah. Uh, so we did all of that. Uh, yes. And raise the Titanic. They did take us all over. It was quite wonderful. And have you ever just listened to it? Yeah. Yeah. When if you want, listen to the music. The music is incredible. And did John Williams do the music? I think he yeah. did, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. The music. Great film. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I had a great time. Everybody well, wanted to know then, when when the last time you saw Kate Jackson, because you guys were so great well, together. Well, everybody always talks about how much chemistry there was. Yeah, yeah. between you and Kate <clears throat> Jackson. Yeah. A Kate I haven't seen in years. Yeah. Yeah. In years. Uh, another question from the listening audience. I don't know if you knew this, David, but it, it's kind of ironic that we're talking to you today because today is actually, today is actually the 40th anniversary of the day that Falcon Quest debuted on TV. Uh, so our listeners are wanting to know uh, about what it was like working on Falcon Crest, uh, what it was like working with Jane Wyman. You seem to have this reoccurring event in your career where you work with these great classic Hollywood actresses. I was very fortunate, and, and again, I'll say, I was blessed. Jane Wyman and I, we became very dear friends. I can say that. I mean, uh, literally, she uh, took me by the hand and looked after me. We had, uh, you know, we'd have meals together after <laughs> after the day shooting. Sometimes we would. Uh, share a glass of wine <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> Jane was Jane Wyman was wonderful absolutely again she was like Joan Bennett right. they were my god go back and look at those old movies incredible uh, it's just uh, quite wonderful so yes that was a very special time Falcon Crest and then you think about all of the actors yeah, Joan Bennett almost got the part of Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. Yes, yeah. he tested. And wow. Gone with the Wind, I'd worked with a director. He was also set to do, or was going to, George Cukor. And <laughs> <coughs> George was. But um, anyway, uh, the J- Joan Jane Wyman, all of the actors came on to that show. I mean... Uh, dear Abby Dalton, right, right, um, so many. Susan Sullivan, yeah. Abby, um, uh, Kim Novak. There you yeah, go. Yeah, Can't forget her. Uh, Lana Turner. Mm-hmm. Lana, I can't tell you what a wonderful, special person. So we're Lana. looking forward to the great Christmas thing you're going to be doing. And I have to end this by asking you something silly. It'll take a little bit of thought. But if you were Quentin Claus, <laughs> in, instead of Santa Claus, if you were Quentin Claus, speaking as Quentin, not as David Selby, let me name a few people and tell me what Quentin Claus would give these characters in Dark Shadows if Quentin Claus would be handing out gifts. What oh would my God. What, <laughs> be in a spot. What? <laughs> what would Quentin Claus give Barnabas Collins? What would Quentin uh, give Barnabas uh, Collins? Yes. What would Quentin give Barnabas? Oh, I don't know. Maybe another cane. <laughs> <laughs> and what would uh, Quentin Claus give <clears throat> Reverend Trask? Well, Trask. Oh. A smile. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you you got one, Tiff, or is it? No, one? I'm not going to put David on the spot anymore. I did. I did <clears throat> want to get one more question in uh, before we wrap up that the audience was yeah. asking, and, and there's the side that they're asking, but then I wanted to to give you a chance to talk a little bit about something else related. 
so the audience was wanting to know if it's true that you actually named your son after a character from Dark Shadows. And then yes. my side of it is I would love for you to take a minute to just talk about some of the great work that you and your wife have done uh, with charities and also with uh, Theater for Children. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, yes, my son, James was named after the character right. uh, uh, on Dark Shadows. I mean, that's where I first I thought, oh, that'll be wonderful. Right. Um, so he was born during Dark Shadows, and that, that took care of that. I was <laughs> Um what else? Well, what was the second one? Uh, talk a little bit about the work you and your wife have done with charities <clears throat> and also with uh, theater for children. Well, I'll lay all of that on to my wife, who has always been... I, you talk about when I say how blessed I've been. Yes. That was by far the most important blessing I have ever had or ever yeah. have come into was... Uh, uh, the love of my wife. She and you know I I, I I don't know that I've told this. First time we were not the first time. Second time we were in New York, and I was offered a teaching job. And she said, "That's not why we came here for you to teach." She says, "I'll get a job. You're going to act." Wow. She took a job with the American Bankers Association and for the next few years, couple of years, that was, you know, so that, that was a turning point when we got to New York. We had gone directly to New York from Cleveland. We had been at a couple of regional theaters, but uh, we went there. Anyway, uh, and then she had been... Uh, she had the idea that we'd do a children's theater. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> we were living about an hour outside of New York, uh, upstate, and so we did. We started this theater, and of course, what would happen is I'd get a job and go off, and she was stuck running the whole thing, <laughs> directing it, playing the piano. <clears throat> she did all the music. Wow. When we were at the, I was at the Barter Theater. It's a theater in Abington, Virginia. <clears throat> and she came direct from school, direct from, we were in school together out in a place called Southern Illinois University. We were out there, so she meets me at the Barter Theater, and right away, she, she starts playing the piano for the children's theater, and they went on a tour around <laughs> Wow. Virginia, you know? <laughs> so she was always, she, Anyway, yes, we did all of that. She continued. Then when we got to L.A., finally, years later, she became the head of a, uh, of a non-profit. And she, uh, one of the things I'm very, uh, you know, and I, she would never say this, but um, she did that money for years. She did that job for years. She was the head of the non-profit, and she did not take a salary. Wow. Wow. Now, we were blessed because I was making enough money thanks to Falcon Crest or whatever films I had gotten to do. And uh, so we were, you know, but, uh, yeah. All of that, she and then she had the to, biggest blessing. She had to deal with <clears throat> all the girls that were all over you all the time. Everybody's wanting to <laughs> kiss quit and, and didn't bother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, You'd be sure to bring that <laughs> one up. <laughs> So please tell me among your collectible items that you have your sideburn still. I, you know, I did for years. I don't know whether I still I have a pair or not. I, I, <laughs> I don't think so. Because you had you had the greatest sideburns next to Elvis Presley. You really yeah, did. You know, first I tried to grow my own. Yeah. You know, under the uh, uh, Vinny Lascaux, the Vinny. He, was, he made these great sideburns, and then I thought, oh, I'm tired of gluing these on every day. I'll grow my own. But of course, my own never had the uh, appeal that his did. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we know who you love in real life, and that's your wife. Yeah. As Quentin Collins, who do you think Quentin really loved the most? Was it perhaps Amanda Harris? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
Amanda Harris? Samantha, what was it? Amanda? The character Amanda Harris. Yeah, you, like, you like literally, uh, Quentin literally went to hell for Amanda <laughs> Harris. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he had to go through his uh, whole obstacle course thing. And <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, again, I want to uh, remind everyone to check out the Dark Shadows of Christmas Carol, which is going to be happening on Sunday, December 19th. It's going to be great. 4 p.m. Pacific. Yes. That's right. 7 p.m. on the East Coast. And, uh, David, I just wanted, to, as we wrap up here, I wanted to thank you uh, for everything that, that you've given the world, not only through your acting, but through your writing. Uh, Terry and I are father and daughter. He's a first-generation Dark Shadows fan. I have grown up watching Dark Shadows and loving Dark Shadows, and now I do this show with him. But but Dark Shadows is a very strong thing that we share. Father and daughter. Yes. But you're not. Are you? Who's your father? He's he's the dad. I'm the dad. I'm the the, the, the daughter. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. uh, They they conveniently. I got to tell you how touching that is. They conveniently put Dark Shadows on at a time that I wasn't home from school, so I stayed home from school, and I flunked because I was watching (laughs) Dark Shadows, (laughs) and it was worth it. It was worth it. I'm so glad you hung in there and flunked. I also wanted to thank you. uh, For those that have not seen it, there was a, a new documentary that just came out a couple months ago. Uh, there was a documentary on Jonathan Frid, yeah. and I personally thought that your segments where you were talking about Jonathan uh, was so heartfelt, and there were so many kind and wonderful things that you said about him um, that I wanted to thank you for that. And just for the love, the love that I've seen amongst the, the cast with each other to where even later in years when John Carlin was in a wheelchair and you guys were taking care of him, making sure he got around, yeah. that to me means more than any PR or any kind of anything that anybody else could put out there. Bless you. Yeah. Johnny Carlin, I can't tell you what a dear, dear man and friend. And uh, I loved him. Truly did. <laughs> he used to, he, he would break me up on the set, he, purposely, on purpose. <laughs> I would be on camera, and all of a sudden I'd see Carlin under the camera, ducking <laughs> down, you know, <laughs> making all kinds of no, you know, faces at me. <laughs> my, my favorite John Carlin blooper, and I saw it last night, it's on YouTube, and his line as Willie was, I'm so scared, it gives me the willies. And he broke character and goes, <laughs> gives me the willies, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he is incredible. Do, do, you have, do you have the Quentin Collins and the Quentin as a werewolf paintings that was done? Uh, let's see. Do I have a werewolf? Yeah. Alex Stevens was, you know, my werewolf. I don't think I, wait a minute. No, because they put out a couple. We, we they're, know they're an artist. Re, they're repros. There's an artist that's out there that does renderings of all of the dark, sh- all of the paintings that were in Dark Shadows. And th- he's oh. actually very, very good. And, uh, yeah. yeah, he he put out, uh, the he's done renderings of the Quentin, the Quentin paintings and the werewolf paintings. Well, I have a couple of things that were from that time um, done by artists. Yeah. Right. Well, it was a big collage of the different faces of Quentin. Yeah. And another uh, oil paint. Somebody had done an oil painting. Excuse me. That's I'm, right. So, but I don't have one of Quentin as a werewolf. Well, we've I got a, think. there's a big one about this size of Quentin, and there's one that size of, of the werewolf. You know, Quentin ah. is a werewolf. And uh, we need to talk to the artist to I'll see if we can get him. you. I might be able to get you a couple of them, because yeah. he's a huge hey. Dark Shadows fan. <laughs> Yeah. He even signs Charles Delaware Tate on the painting. So, <laughs> are, are you are you sorry that you never got to play the werewolf? I know Alex Stevens played the werewolf. Would you have wanted to have put all that hair on? And <laughs> we had such fun where I would be something and I would duck down behind a couch or something and up would pop the werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> it was Alex. <laughs> no, we had a. Alex, we had a good time together. So if you, it, if you don't shave for a while, do you look like the werewolf more than... <laughs> no. Uh, no. 
Not now. <laughs> no, I don't look like the werewolf. I well, don't. Uh, well, we're going to let you I go, look, I David. Look a little like Abraham Lincoln. Yes, yeah, you do. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm from Illinois, and I appreciate your your portrayal of Abraham You're from Lincoln. From Illinois? Yes, yeah. sir. We're both yes, from, sir. We're both from the Chicago area. Yeah. Oh well, I played Chicago, the Goodman Theater. Do you know the Goodman Theater? Yes, yes I do. Yes. And you were the I was best. Just there, well, yeah. Really, you were the best Abraham yeah. Lincoln ever. You were so great as Lincoln. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah. as we end this, we appreciate you coming on so much, and I know you're going to tell everybody on this great Zoom event where you're doing a Christmas carol, Merry Christmas. But for our audience here, if by chance they don't get to watch and they need to watch, I'll let you give everybody your great fans your Christmas wish. My Christmas wish. Yeah. Oh. Oh, goodness. Well, my Christmas wish that we can all, we can all uh, in this country uh, come together. Come together. Yeah. You know, I don't remember a time, even in this, during Dark Shadows, the late 60s and there, and all the things that came down. In dark sh in, in during those years, mm -hmm. I mean, just think about it: the, the Robert Kennedy's uh, assassination, Martin Luther King, so many. Uh, you know the unrest, protests, student. You know we had so many things going on. But today, I don't recall a time when it seems like our country is a little fragile. Yeah. With all of us. so. Okay. I just pray that we all, and I know we all do, everybody does, for us to come together and love and cherish and take care of each other. Uh, and, and, and everybody, please, I mean, uh, have a blessed holiday. You know, it's that old thing, but it's true. Yeah. Have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. But may we all have a, a happy new year. Yeah. And can we get just a short preview of your performances come up? Can you just give us a bah humbug? <laughs> give us a what? Can you just give us a bah humbug? Because we're going to be... Ah, uh, uh, bah, I don't know. I haven't, I'm going to do that. You know, I thought about going back and watching these old, like, actors like Alistair uh, Alistair Sims. Alistair Sims, Sims yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, and George C. Scott did it. Yeah. Uh, Henry Winkler. Uh, Henry I Winkler. Don't know what it is. Ah, yeah. Henry Winkler ah. played uh, uh, Scrooge, who was Fonzie, but I wouldn't watch that one. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, David. Just, I just want you to know, we've now I'm getting emotional. We've lost so many Dark Shadows people, and you people are so blessed to us. Thank you, and please take care of yourself. Hey, you, father and daughter. Yeah. How wonderful, you know, that you're, that we, I really feel, um, you know, fortunate to have met you two yeah. and get to do this. Absolutely. Thank Bless you. Thank you. We'll do another one someday. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us, David, and have a great rest of your weekend. And we will be tuned in on December 19th for sure. Absolutely. Merry right. Christmas. Merry Christmas, David. Yeah, have a lovely, lovely holiday and a wonderful New Year. Yeah. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.